Tesla shows the automotive industry why they are now the most valuable automaker in the world. Rivian gets sued by the most valuable car maker in the world while pushing its deliveries to summer of the next year. Polestar beats Tesla to market in a category Tesla was targeting back in 2012. Ford unveils 1400 horsepower Mustang Mach-E one-off race car with seven motors. Bugatti's all-electric car starts at $35,000, but there is a bit of a catch. Bernie Sanders calls out Elon Musk and many other exciting electric car news coming up next. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of electric car scoop. If this is your first time here and you are interested in everything that's going on in the world of electric cars, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. As you probably know, Tesla reported its quarterly earnings for the second quarter of this year, which was followed by always entertaining earnings call with Elon Musk and the gang. Once again, Tesla beat all of the expectations from Wall Street and just from regular Tesla fans. And I believe it's really the only manufacturer right now that had good news in their Q2 report. We already knew that they've delivered over 90,000 cars in Q2, but we've also learned that they've earned over $6 billion in revenues, delivered 50 cents earnings per share, and made $104 million in profits. The biggest news was that Tesla has finally picked Austin as the site for their next factory. Now, if you're keeping track, this is the fourth quarter in a row that Tesla made profits, which means they're now qualified to potentially join S&P 500. However, some people have noticed that in Q2 and in Q1, uh, the profits and a lot of revenues for Tesla came in because of the green credit sales. For that, we turned to Inside EV's contributor, Tom Malogny. All right, Tom, so one of the reasons why Tesla was able to turn the impressive profit in Q2 and in Q1 was because they sold a lot more than usual of the green credits. So, one, can you tell my audience a little bit of what green credits are and uh, why people are talking about it? Because some are saying that, hey, at some point, those will run out and then Tesla will have to go back to uh, taking a loss. Right. So these um, zero emission vehicle credits that California mandates that manufacturers make a certain percentage of their cars zero emission vehicles and, and, and sell them. And uh, what happens is if a manufacturer doesn't make enough, there's huge penalties and, and eventually they're, they're no longer allowed to sell cars in California if they don't adhere by it. So what they do is they're allowed to buy credits from other companies that have excess uh, Zev credits. Now, Tesla only makes electric cars. So all the credits they have are <laughs> available to sell because they're not offsetting gas cars. So yet, yeah, I mean, this has been going on for years and I'm actually, you know, getting a little tired of hearing people complain about Tesla selling the Zev credits. It's true. They've raked in over $2 billion in the last, I think, seven years in Zev credits. And it's probably a big part of the reason why Tesla's still with us, the Zeb credits. But get over it. That it that's part of the game. It's revenue and it counts. And you know, the funny thing is, I remember five or six years ago, all these, you know, uh the 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 Wall Street people saying, well, Tesla's only making money because they sell these Zeb credits, and that's gonna go away in a year or two because Audi and Mercedes and Jaguar, all these companies are coming out with electric cars. So they won't need to buy Tesla's credits anymore. See, the thing is, they all came out with their electric cars, but they're not selling enough of them. They still need to buy Tesla's credits. So, you know, I don't think Tesla's, these Zeb credits are going to be going away anytime soon because I don't see the other OEMs putting out compelling products where they sell so many of them that they don't need to buy Tesla's Zeb credits. Now, let's talk about the other OEMs and their sales. And I don't just mean sales of electric cars. I mean their sales. In uh, part of the uh, uh, quarterly report that Tesla attached a chart that we're looking at right now, where in the first uh, half a year of this 2020, uh, year over year, Tesla seems to be the only company that uh, had their sales grow where everybody else had them fall. Now, 
Granted, this is Tesla's chart and they only include the areas where they are selling cars, though. That's that's a fair that's a fair statistics. Um, nevertheless, we are not comparing Tesla electric car sales and OE, other OEMs electric car sales. We're comparing Tesla sales with other gas, electric, whatever car sales. Why do you think Tesla was able to succeed this year during this pandemic? where all of the arrest of the major manufacturers have ha, are having a really hard time. Well, first, we've got to, you know, we beat up Tesla a lot, Alex, you and I sometimes, but you also have to give credit where credit is due. You know, this year should have been a disaster for everyone with COVID-19 shutting down factories, putting people out of work. People are wouldn't would have normally bought a car, weren't buying cars. And you, you just look at that chart there and you see everyone is down like more than 20%. And that's a huge number to be down 20% year over year for, for half a year. And then Tesla's up above, I think it's around 12%. It's just, I mean, kudos to them. It's amazing that they've done that. I don't have all the answers to why they've done it, but I, I would imagine a couple of the real significant factors was number one, uh, Tesla Shanghai came online. So that gave them added capacity and in a market that was ripe and well ready to buy their cars. So that definitely, you know, absolutely helped. Secondly, the Model Y was introduced during the first half of this year. And there was a lot of built up anticipation about this car. People, you know, there were a lot of reservations. People were waiting for the car. So, you know, a lot of these people took possession of the car where if, if they were just regular car shopping at the time during COVID, they might not have. But, you know, they wanted this Model Y. So, the, you know, they were willing to take their, you know, contactless delivery or do whatever they could to get the car. So I think those two things contributed. It doesn't tell the whole picture. And the whole picture is just that there's a demand for Tesla's cars and people want them. And uh, every year that demand increases. So, you know, uh, you know, Tesla's just right now, that they, 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 they've got the Midas touch. Don't forget to subscribe to Tom's channel. I put that link in the description of this video. And of course, now we're going to bring in our other contributor, the president of my Tesla adventure, Eli Burton, because I have a feeling he has something to say about this as well. All right, Eli, me and Tom just discussed the green credits uh, that Tesla sold and almost record amounts to uh, get to the profit. But I know you also have a strong opinion about it. So the floor is yours. So look, the credits thing is an awesome thing that Tesla has and is an incentive structure that world governments have put in place to punish vehicle companies who are not making zero emission vehicles. Uh, that's part of the infrastructure. It's going to be there for quite a while. And it's something that Tesla is getting to capitalize to spend more money on for growth. Now, what's driving me crazy about this is as soon as Tesla posted their four straight profitable quarter, They've now immediately turned the narrative to, oh yeah, well, Tesla has been profitable for four quarters, but if it weren't for these zero emissions credits that they're selling, they wouldn't be profitable and insinuating that as soon as these things go away, Tesla will go bankrupt. Like it's almost like there's just never a level at which Tesla can be so successful that they're willing to drop down the drumbeat of saying that they're going to be a failure. Now, do you think they will go away at some point? And, and, and do you think by then Tesla will be able to generate enough of profits to compensate for that as well? I think it's going to be a very long while where they go away. In fact, Tesla CEO even said that their current projections are on track for in 2020 to sell twice as many credits as 2019 because one, they're producing more cars than ever and legacy manufacturers still pumping out an unbelievable amount of gas cars and are still ramping up their ice manufacturing. So I believe there's probably 10 years of this before it starts on the decline. And yeah, absolutely, Tesla will be able to make a profit without it. In fact, if they didn't have the credits right now, they could just spend less on growth and be profitable. But once when you have that capital, why not spend it on growing, striking while the iron's hot? All right. Now let's talk about something else that people have been talking about. Um, inclusion in S&P 500. One, uh, tell us what qualifies them now to be considered. And uh, secondly, why is it such a big deal to be included in S&P 500? So one of the benchmark qualifications for, be, for inclusion in the S&P 500 is to have four straight profitable quarters. Uh, companies can be added by approval of the board outside of that, but that's typically when it happens at a full year of profitability. So this is a big deal because once they get included in the S&P 500, 
all, all of the S&P index fund holders, which are a lot of very large financial institutions, will have to buy Tesla shares that are proportional to its percentage of the S&P. So I've looked at recent numbers that with Tesla at a $300 billion market cap, 28% of the current shares available on the open market of Tesla will have to be bought by all these big index funds and all these big, large in, uh, institutional investors. And what that means is it's going to be a big boon for the Tesla stock price. All right. Do you think it's going to happen anytime soon? So as I understand, the S&P inclusion process can take months. They're still, they're still, the board has to take action. They have to vote. Um, I think that's going to be by the end of the year. Uh, one of the things that I've read that's interesting is this will be the largest company that's ever been added to the S&P. Uh, when the S&P added Facebook, they were at $120 billion valuation. Tesla is now at a $300 billion valuation. And apparently it is very tricky when you take an existing index and stuff in a company the size of Tesla. Tesla is going to be like the 14th largest company, 15th largest company in the index if it were to get added right now. So I know they have some financial and technical hurdles that they're going to have to get through to make that inclusion. Now, let's talk about the earnings call. And, you know, in the last couple of days, we've talked about the Austin factory and so many other things. But you found a jewel that uh, is extremely important. As a matter of fact, you believe this might actually make uh, a Tesla an industry leader in yet another niche. Do tell. So this is Tesla insurance. So it was near the end of the call and it was after a number of other kind of incredible revelations and it almost got lost. But Elon talked about that their plan is to expand to insurance nationwide, but then two, they're solving the insurance problem in a way that existing insurance companies can't even touch. So existing insurance companies is a huge disconnect between your insurance provider, the manufacturer of the car and the body shop or the mechanic that repairs your cars when there's damage. And there's a lot of cost expenditure and waste all the steps in that chain. Well, Tesla is looking at this problem saying, look, we're gonna repair cars at cost because we're repairing our own cars. But the piece that's really genius is if they are insuring a large number of their drivers and they consistently have certain types of parts get damaged and accidents and crashes that are very expensive to replace, they now can actually look at that and say, hey, we have a financial incentive to redesign how this element of the car works to make it cheaper so that we increase our margins on the insurance side. Versus every other automaker, all they care about is their margins out the door. Tesla can care about both margins out the door, but also on making more money on their insurance product. And being that they're doing that all under one roof, making their, their product vertically integrated with the insurance that's insuring it and keeping that in mind in the engineering lifecycle design, it's, it's mind blowing of what they're gonna be able to do in both making more money than other insurance companies and also selling it at a cheaper rate to their customers. Don't forget to subscribe to Eli's channel, My Tesla Adventure. I put that link in the description of this video as well. Now, while Tesla was busy making profits, building factories, they also found some quiet time to file a lawsuit against Rivian. Before we talk about that, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Evanex, the Tesla community's accessory store. Use E4 Electric, the name of this channel, as a discount code for all of your purchases over $100. The lawsuit that Tesla has filed against Rivian has some serious accusations of stealing trade secrets. Now, let me remind you that Tesla has filed similar lawsuits against other companies, including the one that they're in the middle of right now against Xpeng Motors and the one that they've already settled. So it looks like they were at least partially correct with their accusation. And this was against Zooks, which is also much like a Rivian partially owned by Amazon. In the lawsuit, Tesla outlined some very detailed accusations. They believe that former Tesla employees that now work for Rivian have bluntly downloaded and essentially stole some of the documents that had uh, manufacturing, sales, logistical, and supercharger related materials. Now we do know that Rivian is thinking about creating their own fast charging network, but manufacturing and logistics, uh, you guys know who your investors are? Amazon, Awesome at Logistics, and Ford, you know, the company that's been making cars for a while. As a matter of fact, one of the strategic reasons for Rivian to take money from Ford as an investor was to learn some of the know-how from them. And how do I know that? Well, this one guy told me who I think knows a little bit about that. So, so that's one of the things that's been great. Ford has been um, incredibly helpful, incredibly open to helping us as we, as we design our manufacturing system and as we get ready to launch our plant. And 
you know, it's often not, um, it, it's often something people don't think about, but, but Ford actually builds more aluminum body vehicles than anyone else in the world. Uh, the F-150 is an aluminum body vehicle. So of course, with these being aluminum, there's a lot of things that they've learned in terms of stamping and welding aluminum bodies at very high volumes. Uh, so we've had an opportunity to, to really exchange notes and to you know, visit their facilities, understand their processes, understand how they go about validating their processes, and, and of course, look at how we then do our own. So what did Rivian say when Ford has offered that know-how to them? Were they like, oh, yeah, 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 this, this is great stuff. But you know, what we can't find in here is how to make the panel gaps bigger and the paint degenerate a little bit faster, you know, like within the first year of ownership. Yeah, so I think we're going to go and find that somewhere else. Rivian has also announced that they're going to be pushing their deliveries one more time, obviously due to COVID-19 challenges. They're going to deliver the truck, the R1T, in June of the next year, and the SUV, the R1S, in August. Now, this is going to make things much more interesting because originally Rivian was supposed to be the first electric truck to market by far, but now it looks like it's going to be in the same ballpark with the Tesla Cybertruck, possibly Ford electric truck, maybe even GM electric truck, which is going to be most likely the Hummer. The all-electric Ford Mustang Mach-E is a highly anticipated crossover that's going on sale later this year. However, Ford has decided to treat its future electric audience to something very, very special. They have unveiled one-of-a-kind a Mustang Mach-E race car with 1,400 horsepower and seven motors. Uh, and I don't think they're counting one of those motors that roll your windows up and down. I think these are like motors motors. Check this out. This was done in collaboration with one of the aftermarket outfitters, RTR, and Ford has done this before. If you remember, I featured one of their one-of-the-kind all-electric six-speed manual transmission Ford Mustang Lithium with 900 horsepower and absolutely no crowd control. As you can see, it was impossible to get a shot there without people walking in front of me, but I just assumed they were all Prius drivers. Bugatti has an all-electric car for sale at the starting price of $35,000. Will it compete with Tesla Model 3? Well, I strongly doubt it because this was made for kids. That's right, a $35,000 car for kids. And by the way, it starts off at $35,000. If you want all the bells and whistles, the top price is $68,000 for the kids' car. It is called Bugatti Baby 2. It is a 75% scale a replica of a car that Bugatti created for his son in 1926. This electric version will have a range of anywhere between 15 and 31 miles on one charge and will go up to 42 miles an hour depending on the version that you get. Now, as you can tell, the child actor in this video is a bit older than you would think, but it's only because he beat me with the adoption papers to one of the reservation holders. Polestar 2 will beat Tesla to market with a feature that I've been waiting for for a long time, and that's the App Store. For those of you regular viewers of this channel, you probably remember a couple of weeks ago, I put out a video of all of the promises and the vision that Elon had for Tesla at the Tesla Model S unveiling back in 2012. And one of the things that even now we still don't have in Tesla's was the App Store that he was talking about. Um, and, and then also the, uh... We're going to allow um, a whole series of apps to be developed for the car. So over time, as people come up with, with good ideas and cool things that can be added to the, the car, we can just add it in. If somebody's developed an app for um, an iPhone or an Android phone, um, we, and, and it makes sense to add to the car, we can, we, it's very easy to adapt it for that. Well, guess what? Because Polestar 2 will be the first car to have the Google's Android Automotive OS, it will also have the very first app store for any vehicle in the industry. It looks like the first batch of the applications will be mainly entertainment and media, so iHeartRadio, Spotify, and so forth. 
I'm assuming they're also going to squeeze in YouTube somewhere there because YouTube is owned by Google. Of course, it will have features like Hey Google and Google Maps and other really cool Google services. So I'm really looking forward to this. Think of all the exciting apps that developers will be able to develop for us to enjoy in our cars app store. Let me know in the comment section what would be the app that you would like to have in your car. All right, let's switch back to Tesla for a second. And despite the fact that uh, all of this positive publicity was all on Tesla this week, Elon decided to go on Twitter and tweet something about politics. So what can go wrong? Elon voiced his opinion against the stimulus package that's being considered in our Congress, pointing out that it is full of special interest earmarks. Yeah, earmarks, you, you know, those things where like big corporations get tax breaks for their factories. I mean, yeah, Tesla doesn't do that. Oh, shortly after that, Bernie Sanders has jumped in and tweeted back at Elon saying, what a hypocrite. Elon Musk has received billions in corporate welfare from US taxpayers. Now he wants to stop 30 million Americans who lost jobs from receiving $600 per week in unemployment benefits while his wealth has gone up by $46.7 billion over the past four months. Pathetic. All right, well, let me pose that question to you guys, uh, especially the musketeers, as Rich Rebuilds calls you. Um, do you think that Elon should at some point stop, you know, tweeting unless it's about Tesla or artificial intelligence or space? Asking for a friend. All right, let's move on, but stay on Tesla for now because there is more good news. And that's because Tesla Model Y is now available as a lease. $4,500 down, $499 a month for three years with allowance of 10,000 miles per year. Now, I got to say this is a bit earlier than everybody expected. And some people are probably going to question the demand, which it looks like is fine. Most likely the reason for it, and again, the reminder that it took Model 3 two years to get here. The reason for it is probably because they're doing very well on cash right now. I think they have like $8 billion worth of cash, so they can afford doing this. But for those of you who love leases, for those of us I love leases, this is a great option. Is this a great deal? No, but it is an option, so check it out. Nio, the all-electric Chinese car maker that's also listed on New York Stock Exchange here in the United States, has launched its third electric car called EC6 Electric Coupe. It will start at $52,000 and essentially it's a sportback version of its midsize electric SUV ES6, which will also be two-door. It's exactly the same inside and it will come with two of my most favorite features, the electric assistant Nomi and the battery swap. Another Chinese electric car manufacturer, Xpeng Motors, which we have mentioned earlier, has received half a million dollars in funding. Now, this is significant as they've just launched P7 all electric luxury sedan, which has the longest electric range of all electric cars in China. It is because the long range, uh, the latest version of the Tesla Model S with 402 mile range is not being sold there just yet. As you guys know, the manufacturing guru Sandy Munro is a regular contributor to this channel. You can see him uh, right here every month. So if you haven't subscribed yet, if anything, this would be a great reason for you to do so. But I wanted to mention something that he's doing right now that's pretty cool. So he's selling this uh, collectible item really which is a, one of the battery cells from the Model Y teardown that he did. It comes with a certificate because um, there's only 200 of them that they're making. It's signed by him right here. So I put a link in the description of this video. So I make no money on this. I just thought this was really cool. So go ahead and I, there should be some left for you guys. You can have it signed. Uh, I think you can have a video along with it. So check it out. Link in the description of this video. Looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.